Hello everyone, and welcome to another fine episode and fun episode of Pop Culture Minefield with me, Keith. And me, G Gary. <laughs> Gurry, as Vic Armstrong would call me. Alright, this <laughs> episode we're going to talk about Entertainment Weekly celebrates the 20th anniversary of some dude named Joss Whedon and <laughs> and had David Greenwald. Yeah, they had a, a they had a TV show. Angle? And, and 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 we'll discuss that. But it's twentieth anniversary of, of a show that they uh, had that was How kind of popular. Work? And then uh, also we're going to be discussing that uh, that that whole mysterious Spider Man project <laughs> and its connection to J J Abrams. Oh my lord! You know it's gonna. I'm gonna get the vapors. <laughs> um, and then we're gonna talk about. Uh, oh yes, now San Diego gonna... Comic Con big announcement. There's something that we thought was going to happen, and it's not gonna happen. And it turns out, uh, for those of us that sort of assumed that it wasn't happening, we were kind of wrong. Wonder it... what it is. Mm. So with that, survive the credits. And you'll find out. Roll credits! From the deepest, darkest recesses of Dangerous Nerds headquarters, Keith Moncrief and Gary Cassell. You survived the credits. Welcome back. That's Keith. And that's Gary. And we're talking nerdy, nerd, 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 nerd stuff. Well, welcome to episode 93. Big Saturday morning hello to you and yours. And hopefully, you, as Gary likes to say, you got your big old bowl of cereal with the milk. And you're just ready Salad to Salad bowl. Time. Captain Crunch. <laughs> got in the milk. Big old serving spoon. <sighs> So, we're going to start off today by uh, talking about Entertainment Weekly uh, and how uh, over the last few years they've, they've managed to put together a few interesting projects to keep us reading that magazine. And a few years back they were able to get the entire cast of Buffy back together for her anniversary and now they reassembled the cast of the spinoff series Angel to do the same thing for its 20th anniversary this year. So, uh, uh, Entertainment Weekly gathered the entire cast, minus actor Andy Hallett, who played Lorne, who passed away in 2009. Uh, but everybody's back, and as always, when you go to Entertainment Weekly's official website, you'll have access to all of the interviews, including behind the scenes footage, of the uh, photo shoot for the cover, and there are three, I think, different covers that they have, including the extra special, really cool cover of David Boreanaz getting back into his angel pose, and then, of course, the <laughs> one cover that'll be the major regular cover for every all the issues, which is the entire cast uh, together on the cover. Uh, well, the entire original cast from season two. And then uh, uh, the photo shoot, as you see, added one additional person to it, a certain blonde vampire. And uh, so uh, they were able to, to, to pretty much reunite the entire cast from season five. He was a really good... Uh, uh, Addition? No, he was uh, on Smallville. Yes. I liked his portrayal of Brainiac. Yes. Well, you can also find him currently on the Hulu hit series, The Runaways. Which I still have not watched. You yet. should. I it's know. Good. You keep telling me. It's good stuff. And I just, I'm trying to find that time because, you know, I like to binge watch. Yes. Uh, when I'm working, doing artwork, I like to, to put something on next to me. And so I can sit there and draw and keep looking to my left. And it's, it keeps me company because it's so lonely. Um <laughs> And so I do, I find that guy's name funny, uh, David Greenwald. Uh, yeah. Uh, Herr Greenwald. 
Have you brought your television show, Angel? Yeah. Would you like to touch my monkey? <laughs> <laughs> it look it is it was one of those shows that I have to admit I probably enjoyed it even more than I enjoyed Buffy and I really enjoyed Buffy and it's so funny because like um uh I enjoyed the comics that Dark Horse was doing yeah but I also enjoyed the comic that uh somehow IDW got which was the, the his character the blonde character I just forgot his name Spike Spike they published Spike for a while, and then eventually everything went under one house, and Dark Horse had all the comics. Yeah. But I really enjoyed the continuing stories, and it reminded me of how abruptly that show ended. And it shouldn't have ended the way it ended. It, it was it was a combination of things, but what it came down to is the network, uh, well, you know what? You can actually go to Entertainment Weekly. Dot com and find out because they talk about that along with several other stories let you get to actually watch the cast reminisce about including how uh, the explosion that uh, was uh, destroyed Angel Investigations in season one actually affected the Roswell set. Oh, no shit. Jeez. Turns out when they had that explosion, it became a much bigger thing than they than what was originally planned, and the authorities got called out, and the next day they found out that uh, they flooded the set of Roswell. Holy shit. <laughs> I never knew about this. I mean, that harkens to what just hit the news this week with Warner Brothers, with uh, the, the over in U the UK, mm -hmm. on the studio set, they're shooting that, that new movie with... Uh, Princess Diaries uh, actress Anne Hathaway. Yeah. And uh, it's the remake of The Witches, mm -hmm. Roald Dahl's movie. I love the the first movie based off the book. A really good one. I don't know if this second one's really necessary. It's that IP thing when I talk about. But um, two crew guys got into an argument on the set, and one of them stabbed the other in the neck. It became an incident all over the news. Yeah. I'm like, now that's how you make a movie. <laughs> that's entertainment <laughs> but anyway um i'm looking uh, forward to seeing this yes um, i'm probably going to go to once we're done shooting here i'm probably going to jump on entertainment weekly and go watch some of those little uh, interviews oh stuff. They, they, they do a really good job of putting everybody together and 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 creating this really cool atmosphere where they can just feel good enough to be able to tell some of these stories I, i'm such a fan of david borealis uh, I won't watch his show, the the Navy SEAL show. Yeah. I don't know why. It's it's. I'm funny about military shows that if they don't have enough military people involved with it, real ones, I I tend to get away from it. Yeah. Uh, because Hollywood needs to induct more military vets into the acting field. Yeah. They need to be paying attention to that, and I just feel like they're they've fallen flat on their face. And they hire all these actors that have never served to play soldiers, and it's just play acting. It's like. Playing in your yard. Yeah. Just unacceptable. But I love Borealis. I think he's so funny. But yeah. uh, what's next is... Uh, well, the big announcement from uh, Marvel Comics. <laughs> God, I remember that. Yeah. Uh, it, basically, it's a, it, it, it is tied into J.J. Abrams. And it turns out that J.J. and his son, Henry, are writing a miniseries, a brand new miniseries, for Spider-Man that will premiere this September. It's a comic book. And I want to tell you something. I think it was Screen Rant that posted this thing with their headline. J.J. Abrams, a new Spider-Man Spider project. You guys are dicks for that clickbait. I mean, it's a comic book. It's not a freaking movie or a TV series. Dick move. But at the same time, that's really cool. Him and his son. I would love to work with my kids. Um, I love it when my daughter wants to do something with me and or my son has talked about doing something with me. I just, I love that stuff. Well, you know what I'm yeah, talking about as a yeah, dad. It's a whole dad thing. It's a dad thing. <laughs> and having creative, <laughs> energized kids is exciting. It, yeah. it makes us young again because we're not young. <laughs> well, and, and and to be Henry Abrams and and have your dad—he's a cute kid, by the way. Yes. Just like his dad doing the glasses yeah. thing. <laughs> I just think that uh, this is a nice introduction to the way the you know entertainment business works. Nepotism, man. I believe in it. 
Uh, people talk like it's a bad thing. It's like it's only a bad thing when it's an untalented hack yeah. or an evil prick, like in politics. But when it comes to it, you know, somebody like J.J. Abrams and his kid has a lot of talent, you damn straight. Get that kid out there. Yeah. Get him doing stuff. Yeah. And Because Hollywood was built on that, uh, that kind of nepotism. And, and I, I look at some of the great stuff we've gotten over the years. Uh, really good actors and actresses and producers, directors that were the children of other great filmmakers or actors. Sean Penn's dad was uh, a famous screenwriter, uh, actor, I mean, yeah. uh, director. Yeah. And he was really good, despite being a communist. <laughs> <laughs> he got in trouble for it. He was, he was part of that, uh, was it the Something Seven or whatever they're called? Uh, I have to read my books. I, I, UAC. Well, the HUAC, yeah, yeah. Uh, House on Un American Activities Committee. So, if you don't know your history, read there a book. Like, Pick up can, a book. You can just Google that. People love to use McCarthyism, but they really don't know what happened. McCarthy, they started out with the right idea, but went too far with it. They they um, they fudged the lines, and then they started breaking laws, and uh, and that's where they derailed. But um, anyway, that's history. Uh, the last thing we're going to talk about is uh, something very interesting. Yeah, yeah, it has something to do with San Diego Comic Con. San Diego Comic Con is great. Yeah. Twenty nineteen. It turns out that Kevin Feige and the MCU they may be returning to Hall H at San Diego Comic Con this year. Now. The, the word that's being put out is that they're going to basically be unveiling uh, what films they have coming out during the course of what they call and what is recognized. And I guarantee you, if there's something about Keanu Reeves, that's where you'll hear it first. Um, basically, uh, after uh, skipping 2018 for various reasons... Um, MCU is returning to San Diego, and they're having a night. They're going to have a nice time, but I don't think we're going to get everything. As I was saying before, they're not going to bring us everything because D twenty three is going to be a couple of days right after that. Yep. Yeah, and why even do all that if all you're going to do is just blab it all at San Diego? So while it's it, good, yeah, it's like uh, you shoot your load at one Comic Con and then turn right around and have nothing. At yours. Yeah. I mean, because that's technically what it is. This is their home event, and this is what Disney likes to build towards. So in the years where D23 is a thing, I don't think you're going to see anything new out of... Yeah, they're, my bet is you're going to get uh, just the most truncated versions of some of the announcements. Yeah. And just specific announcements. Yeah. And they're going to save the best stuff for D23. Now, that doesn't mean they're not going to have freebies for you. They're probably going to give... Uh, away some some posters and other advertising materials for a lot of the TV stuff that they're going to be doing, like uh, Winter Soldier and the Falcon, um, definitely Loki, and WandaVision are just three of the things they have. Uh, I'm sure they won't be the only ones that will hit the stage. I'm sure that Lucasfilm has a few things they want to get people excited about. And we're going to have some news on Loki on the next episode. Yeah, so... You know, it's good. It it is nothing but fun. That's what all of this is meant to be, uh, from from Marvel and other companies that appear at San Diego. So as long as the crowd's cool and they're receptive, uh, yeah, sure, they're gonna probably just do what they did a few years ago and just flash the entire schedule for all of their films. But if you really want to see something really cool and very in depth. D23 is really where you need to go. And unfortunately, a lot of us are just gonna, that aren't going are going to probably have to wait until the following yep. Monday until this stuff gets released because Disney's really good at making sure that nobody uses their cell phone to actually record anything that's going to, to record any, you know, pictures and or video that's going to be shown there. Yep. Disney controls the narrative. And they are really good about it during this event. So, 
I, I wish I had some more news that 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 could be happier, happier news. But I don't consider it bad news. I consider that just news news that yeah. uh, we're going to get something and then we're going to get more. Yeah, we're going to get something at Comic Con. Yeah, we're going to get more at D twenty three. So I consider that good news. It's a win win. Yeah, it's a win 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 win. The uh, emphasis, the emphasis is on when. <laughs> I'm weird. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, guys, uh, that's it for this episode. We'll see you on Monday. Uh, hope you have a great Saturday, uh, man, dude. I know some of you did not drink that milk after you got all that sugary flavor in it. Drink the milk. Don't waste it. Don't be like my daughter. Don't be like Chance. <laughs> Don't be like Chance, my housemate. Drink your damn milk. From your cereal. And with that, we're out of here. Cubs win. Cubs win. Please remember to like, subscribe, and comment as we love to hear back from our viewers. Also, if you enjoy our videos, please consider becoming a patron of our show through Patreon and or GoFundMe. Links are listed below the video in the description.